Hi guys, thanking for joining me on my third project with Fabian. This time it will be an oil painting from the beginning until the end and no other mediums were applied this time. This project is done on a 50 by 70 centimeter canvas board, not extra primed or anything, just unwrapped and ready to go. I made my outline as I do usual and I started with the background. Normally I do not really know how to end up with the background, especially if it's a portrait. So I for this moment decided to go for a blue, which I will not like in the end and change later on. You will see how I do this. Before you continue with the painting itself, I want to thank Fabian again that he allowed me to paint him. And of course, I also want to thank the awesome photographer, which is T-Shirt Model. And I will link his Instagram, YouTube channel and Facebook down below in the comment section. So please have a look at his awesome work. I really, really love models, his shading, his um, lighting that he uses for his photo. Really awesome to work from. So have a look at him. In case you wonder, the whole process of painting this portrait took me about eight and a half hours. This is of course the net time. I did not include the drying time of the oils. So this was just painting time. As usual, I started again with the darkest values and I just used a dark brown to block the shadow areas. And this will in the end help me to see my values better than if I was painting from light to dark. In this portrait here, I did not make an underpainting, so I really went for the white of the canvas. And so having the darks blocked in first makes it easier to judge the other values. In terms of skin color, I mixed them as I do normally. And I have a skin mixing color video available for you on my channel, where I actually show you how you can mix skin colors out of only five basic colors. And you can get almost any skin tone that or any color actually that you want to achieve by mixing these five colors. And again, I did not take care so much that the colors fit 100% to the original photograph. I just wanted to go somewhat close and went for mixing them. When I do portraits, or in this case half body paintings, I usually go in layers, as I do anyways, I think. And the first layer is always a bit rougher. So I just block in the lights and the darks. I made the midtones, so just connecting the light and the dark values a bit. And I do not really care about the correct color that I want to have in the end. And I do not really care about the shapes that much. I want to have all the muscles and stuff in place so that I know where they are going to be in the end. But I do not really care about the actual size or shape or final shading or any smaller details. These will be changed in the next layers, as this is the easiest, at least for my style of painting. I was never able to do everything right in the first layer, right on spot. This is just something my brain does not understand. <laughs> I don't know. It, I have tried it, but it really did not work for me. So I only go painting in layers. For this painting, I wanted to have the body completed first before I start with the face. This is nothing I do in, in general. Normally I start with the face, but it really does not matter with which part of the body you start. You can also start with the arm or with the hair, whatever you actually feel most comfortable. I oftentimes just switch from part to part to get an overall impression on the look and if everything fits together and looks nice and the proportions are correct and so on and so on. In case you wonder about the strange angle and my messy desk, <laughs> if you remember last time when I made the uh, drawing of Fabian, which was almost the same size, I decided to draw it sideways so that the drawing itself fits perfectly into the video frame. This time I decided to go upwards to make it easier perhaps for you to see my progress on painting it, but in the same time it made it difficult for me to paint it because my desk is, yeah, well, you can see it here how it looks. So I was uh, painting standing upright, which was not the best idea for my back. But, well, I just want to try if it looks better on camera then and if it's easier for you. I don't know if I do these large projects again this way or if they turn it around sideways. You will still see everything that I do, although the angle is a different one. But yeah, I don't I don't know. Let yeah, let me know if you like this one better seeing it upright, although you can see all the stuff in the background as well. So just let me know what you like the most. So I have not yet found any suitable solutions that I can put the painting on an easel and film from there. So yeah, I will see what future brings. So for the moment this is the best solution for me, I think. Once I made the first layers on the body, I continued with the face and my apologies for this one because I did not notice that the camera did not film anymore. And so the first part of blocking in the colors was missed. Sorry. 
But here again I started with the darker colors, so around the eyes and the hair, and blocked in basically all the shapes first before I went into more detailed shading and structuring the face. And the first layers will also look strange, so they will not really look like the end product and will look in a way a bit ugly and unfinished and the colors are off and the proportions may not fit correctly. So this is just normal and each painting has these stages, so if you are in one of these stages just relax, it will turn out better once you have added the next layers. Once I had blocked in all the colors of my painting, I just decided that the background color looks awful. So this was just some kind of baby blue, which did not really fit and it was boring as it just was solid color. Um, with a bit of a color shift to a lighter version, yes, but in, in a way it looked just boring and it did not fit and I did not like it. So I want to change it. So I decided to use my masking fluid to apply it over the at this time dried painting, but it really did not work that well. I really expected it to not work that well because the oil painting is and the masking fluid itself is water-based, so this in general do not work together that well. And as expected, the masking fluid clumped in a way together and created small lakes of uh, masking fluid and it really did not make an even surface so I had to apply several layers of the masking fluid just to get an even coverage of the areas that I wanted to protect and as this was too time consuming I redecided to use my artist tape instead and I used a cutting knife to cut around these areas where the masking tape or artist tape was not able to go correctly in shape so could not follow the shape that I wanted to protect. So when this was done, I started changing the background and I wanted to keep the blue in a way, but I did not want to keep it as solid blue as it was before. And so I decided to go for the same background structure as I did for the Simon painting that you might have seen on my channel as well, as I in a way liked it and it just is a in a way muted background. It's nothing disturbing, but it's not just a solid color. So it has some structure. It is... Yeah, for me itself, it just feels a bit better than just one solid color. So it is easy to do. It is just some color, a lot of liquid to make it dry quicker and to make the brush strokes more visible in this one. And yeah, it just took me about, I think, 15 minutes or so to redo the entire background. And it took until the next day, until everything was right and it could continue with the painting itself. So when the color was added, I instantly removed the artist tape and the masking fluid, as you do not really want to let it dry and remove it then. If you do so, you risk that you rip your color apart as well. So when you remove the masking tape and the color is dry, it is some kind of leathery surface. And if you pull the tape or the masking fluid off, you just risk ripping your color off as well. So I found it works best if you just remove everything as long as the applied color is still wet. On the next day, when the background was dried, I continued with the body and the face and added more layers to correct shadings and correct proportions and created the hairs a bit in more detail and so on and so on. And this was just done more or less by glazing over it. So just using very small amounts of color to tint the color that is actually already on the canvas or use some color with a bit more liquid to make a coat of a glaze over it. And this just tints the color, makes corrections to the values that are already on the painting. And this, I think for myself, is the easiest way to correct things. It is a bit like uh, applying makeup. So in case you know how to apply makeup, this is perhaps a good comparison for you to go over it. In case you wonder how did the freckles, you might not be able to see it in the video that good. This is just the color that I want to use for the freckles and a liner brush and I made some small dots on the nose and his cheeks. If I just had made little dots with my uh, freckle color, these would have looked a bit strange because they would have had defined lines, which does not look natural. So I decided to just use my finger, pushed it into it and spread the color around a bit on his nose and his cheeks. And I did this in a couple of layers to make it look more realistically. And so I created the look as if there were freckles in the skin and to make it look as if they were within the skin and not on top of the skin. This is something important because oftentimes when you make the freckles and the color is too dominant compared to the skin color, they look a bit, yeah, strange, not, not realistically. So you must try to embed them a bit within the skin color. 
And the further I went into detailing, I used the smaller and smaller brushes for details, especially in the eyes and the eyelashes and highlights in the hairs and such. And the hairs in general, I normally do from the darkest value first. So I just plug in the darkest value. And then once this one is dry, I go for the next lighter value, let it dry, next lighter value, let it dry. And I glaze these layers. So actually I use the lighter color, add liquid to it, use a liner brush and draw the hairs and the highlights. This for now seems to be the best working version for me and I like the look of it. So as this was the last painting or drawing that I did for him of his pictures, I finished them up, packaged them and sent them over to him and he was really happy about them. He featured me on his Instagram page and thanked me for them and this was awesome. So really happy he liked them. I hope you liked them too. If you have any questions on this oil painting, please let me know in the comments or contact me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, wherever you want. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. It would mean the world to me and I will see you in my next videos. I wish you a great day. <laughs> bye bye.